Mark Rosekind is the administrator for NHTSA, and we get a chance to talk to him right now about autonomy. Mark, as you know, the automotive industry is racing ahead with this technology. Regulations don't seem to be keep, keeping pace. I know you're very aggressive on this. How are you going to move that forward to keep pace with the very rapid rate of change? So two things. One is, in January, Secretary Fox announced that in six months, NHTSA would produce four things. So we're going to announce in July deployment guidance. How do we get these on the streets safely? Two, a state model policy. How do we get a uniform, consistent framework for the whole nation? Third, how do we structure our current interpretations and exemptions? And four, what new tools and authorities might be looking at Congress here to actually see what else we might need to accelerate the rapid deployment. And the other thing I would just say, it's interesting, but we've already analyzed our current regulations. Volpe has done a study and validated. If you build a vehicle that's compliant with Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, you can pretty much add whatever autonomous capability you would like. It's only when you start getting rid of the steering wheel, the brakes have a different design, then you can run into compliance problems with things. So there's a wide open arena here where we're trying to make sure that we accelerate, but at the same time make sure whatever we're accelerating, it's safe when it gets on the road. Very interesting what you're saying about needing new tools. What kind of things might you go to Congress for? Well, what's interesting is, I'll give you one example, is right now we have exemption authority. And we can exempt certain things to get them quickly, but they have a limit of 2,500 vehicles and can only last for two years. So one thing people have talked about is, if you got rid of those two numbers, you could exempt stuff for large production level kinds of output, as well as for ongoing. Now, we wouldn't want exemption to be the only way to get something on the rule, but that might work for some kind of field operational test. We want to put a large fleet on the ground and actually collect data. So we're looking for new things like that near term, but also maybe new kinds of approval processes we don't currently have, but would allow us to be faster in reacting to what's going on. You talked earlier just about having a broad uh, set of regulations that encompass the nation. There are states already starting to write regulations on that. How do you make sure that the federal law trumps what the states are doing? Well, what's key there is actually making sure they're in collaboration. And so what NHTSA is doing is working with AMBA, the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, the DMV administrators, to try and come up with a policy that everybody agrees to. And a critical part is what you're hitting on. We have to make sure the federal role, the federal role is clearly identified at the same time the state role is clearly identified. We have things compliance with the vehicle. They have things related to the driver. Let's make sure they're actually in collaboration. And I think that will have the most choice. We actually have no say in what the states end up doing. But we do hope a unified, unified policy will be good. We've had the CEO of Volvo over here who said there's a patchwork in Europe that's already getting in the way. We have a chance in the United States to create a platform that would really help accelerate rather than be a barrier. Well, let me pick up on that too. Does the United States have the opportunity to sort of set the regulations for the rest of the world or do you think other regions are gonna go their own way? So let's see how it goes. I'm hoping in July what we announce will create a new framework that people around the world that are looking with, you know, how do we contend with this new area, will say, well, that's an approach that works. And I'm saying that because, like what you were just saying, if we just regulate, it's not gonna work. You know, it takes us eight years to get regulation through. And I, and I, I was just here saying, you know, you're on version 238.32 of whatever it is you're trying to invent by the time the regulation comes out. So we need probably a hybrid. Nimble, flexible, something that's continually being iterated, changed, and evolving, along with some regulatory structure to make sure there are some requirements. What that's going to look like, I think we're going to have to develop literally for this need. Okay, final topic. We're seeing different automakers, or, or certainly different companies, sort of diverge. Mary Barra is saying, hey, we want to keep the steering wheel and the pedals in the car. Google's going, no, let's go right to level four. Where do you think it's going to shake out? Is the room for both views? So this is a great place to end this conversation because <laughs> everyone is sure they know what the future looks like. And what I keep telling everyone is they're telling you their view. They have an idea of what the future is going to become. Here at NHTSA, I keep saying we're in the crosshairs. We are right in the middle getting to watch all of it. And I can pretty much tell you it's on the road now and nobody knows where it's going. <laughs> and so I say that because we do not want to stifle any innovation. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say, well, we're going this way and everybody's over here who's got a totally different concept says, but I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. We need to be as open as we can to as broad and interesting future that saves lives that we can see coming forward. Mark Rosekind, it's so interesting and, and actually welcoming to see a, a regulator talking about having a lot of flexibility in upcoming regulations. I know, can you believe it? I, I can't believe it, actually. Thanks so much for your time today, really appreciate it.